What is up, everybody? Joe Sib here with my co-host. Anaya Bogue. There you go. I almost wanted a drum roll in there for you. That's so sweet. How are you? Pretty good. Good. We are back. Uh, episode 52. Super stoked on this. And we've got a special... Uh, I don't want to say giveaway because it sounds very radio, but I guess it's going to be a giveaway. Yeah. Uh, I'll just kick off the show with this right now. Uh, check it out. You know what? You set it up. We set it up. You're so much better, but okay. Well, I mean, it's all about Anaya because basically what we're doing right now, guys, is this. Guys and girls and everyone involved listening to Rad Parenting. Ladies uh, and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Kids. I'm sure there's some kids that listen to the show. Uh, with that said, if you want a chance to have a private conversation with Anea Bogue. Yes, the author. About parenting. About parenting, yeah. <laughs> I got to preface that. <laughs> Sorry. Bunch of guys were like, hey, I'd <laughs> love to have let's a conversation. Be, let's be clear about what we're offering. Yeah. So basically, uh, what Anea and I were talking about is giving away an opportunity for you guys to have a chance at winning a free 30-minute parent coaching session with Anea Bogue. This is what she does for a living. This is how I met her. And this is how Rad Parenting has come together. All you got to do is text the word parenting to 313131. There's no charge for it. You're not going to get charged any money, but all you got to do is text the word parenting to 313131 and you are going to have a chance at winning a free 30-minute coaching session on parenting with Anea. Anea, what would that session be like? Uh, well, typically, uh, especially with a, like a 30-minute session, a parent will have something that maybe we've talked a little bit about here on Rad Parenting, but they really want to dive deeper or know how to apply it to their specific set of circumstances. And so, you know, the first part of the call will basically be like, here's what I'm dealing with, not sure what to do, or here's what we tr we've tried, doesn't seem to be working, and I will offer you know, suggestions based on my experience uh, as a professional and as a parent. Um, and certainly there'd be an opportunity if they want further conversations after that, but it would just, the purpose would be to give you um, the opportunity to speak with me if there's a particular issue that you're facing that you want some really customized advice on. And I can tell you guys right now, you are going to experience the exact way that this show came together. Anae and I and my wife were all having a phone call. Uh, I put it on speaker mm -hmm. and we were dealing with some sort of situation that was going on and we had a, a question and I couldn't get over to see Anea at her office and do the whole meeting. And I said, can we just get on the phone? And I said, yeah, you know, you were like, okay, let's do it. I remember I put the phone on speaker and my wife and I were sitting at the kitchen table. You were on speaker, of course. And we started talking about the situation and questions that we had. And at a certain point, you and I started kind of joking around. My wife was joking around and all of a sudden my wife's looking at me and she's pointing to the phone. And afterwards, I'm like, what was that all about? And she's like, this is your co-host for this parenting podcast you want to start. Isn't it lovely how yeah. these things just happen? Yeah. Isn't that, I mean, yeah, it, no, that, that is. That's exactly, that's exactly how it happened. And, and that's, I think, part of the reason that we had the banter, just so people are sort of prepared for my style, is because I like to keep it light. You know, and I think that's where we went to is we we're talking about something that actually was pretty heavy for the two of you being like, uh, this is why we need to talk to you right away. <laughs> for our listeners, I'll tell you that it felt extremely heavy because anytime you're dealing with your kids in any situation, in your mind, it is really th the end of the world. Yes. And yes. what I can share with all of you guys is that it that moment, it feels like it's the worst thing in the world, but generally you walk through it and with the help of someone like Anea to help you guide through these different situations. Situations, hopefully in this 30-minute phone call that you get with her, uh, it does help you guys out. And we're going to let you guys know, too, that when you enter to uh, win, we're, we're going to pick three winners. Yep. Gosh, you're giving up 90 minutes of your time. I love you. <laughs> uh, basically, when we pick those three winners, all you got to do is you text uh, the word parenting uh, to 313131, 31, 31, 31, three times, text the word parenting, and then it'll say, like, enter the city that you live in and, a chance to, and you get a chance to win those 30 minutes right. with Anaya. And then we'll be in touch. Wow. I'm excited to see. Who I'm does excited it. too. I mean, I love this. Is I love I love doing this. I love you know that if I when I can be a support to parents, and I do really get as a parent how heavy things can feel, and sometimes you just need a little bit of distance and have somebody who's outside the situation, not as emotionally charged as you are, to to walk you through. And I'm very solution and active oriented. Um, so um, you know, my goal will be that even in a 30 minute call, by the end of it, you will have something that you can do to help remedy whatever the challenge 
challenge you are facing with your child or children. Um, and that makes me feel good. There you go. So that is the business portion portion of Rad Parenting today. I don't know if it's business as much as we're just trying to get to know you guys more and more. And uh, there is the possibility that Nay and I will be going out on the road doing uh, doing Rad Parenting during the day and then doing uh, something at night where it's more like my stand-up and you and I together. And those events will be coming together in 2017 as we go through the year. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just had like a flash to Sunny and Cher. And I Sunny and Cher. I don't know why. And I'm Sunny. Thank you very much. All right, let's dive into the show. Uh, we're gonna go right into note. we're gonna go right into uh, basically uh, an email that we got. We always encourage you guys. This is your show as much as it's ours. You really drive the topics, and uh, we get emails all the time. And we got an email from Dan uh, at radparenting at gmail dot com. And uh, basically, I'll just read the email. Hey, Joe and Anaya, really dig the podcast. I love the word that he used, dig. I use that word dig all the time. It makes me feel like I grew up in the 60s and 70s, which I guess I did. <laughs> Was wondering if possible to do an episode on calming the morning chaos. You know when you need to get the kids to school at eight sharp and it seems like you just can't wake up early enough to do everything and get it done and out the door on time. You have to get them ready while they're distracted by a million different irrelevant things, not to mention you have to get yourself ready for work. And of course, doing this all while trying not to forget anything important, in quotations, my daughter's lunch maybe. Anyway, thanks a bunch and keep up the great work. Dan, thank you so much for the email. I read this to Anea when she came in and um, I'll share with you guys. Uh, the morning time in any household and in our household, I don't know what it's like in yours, Anea, but we'll dive into it. Uh, let's help Dan here. I have a ton of ideas and suggestions because I run our morning like I used to run being on tour. Like I literally, you know, I'll go into the whole thing. But uh, this question that Dan has, I'll just go, what are your thoughts on taming the morning chaos? Well, my first thought is it's extraordinarily important. Like the beginning of the day is sets the tone for everyone. We've talked in previous podcasts about parents being the radio tower. So the energy that we're emitting is going to impact our children, whether they're consciously affected by it or subconsciously affected by it. And I think if we want our family to step out into the world uh, and, and, and start off on a high note, we really need to understand how important it is to set the tone in the morning, to limit the chaos, and, and to do what we can to create. I'm a big believer in routines, and I've seen it work with both my daughters. And as most of you know, I have this sort of unique situation of like, you know, well, it, it worked with the first one. That doesn't necessarily mean 12 years later, it's also going to work with the second one, but I see it, it working in slightly different ways. But nonetheless, I think it gives kids a sense of security, a sense of safety, and it helps them develop their own routines for their future adulthood when they're going to be running the show for themselves. So I'm um, a huge advocate for, for routines that cut the chaos and help send ourselves and our children out into the world on a positive note. Who is going to be flying this plane? Yeah. Who is going to be getting us to our destination? Yep. And when I say our destination, it really is in the morning. My wife and I, even before we go to bed at night, we will say to each other, uh, hey, are you taking, uh, you know, are you taking my daughter to school in the morning? Hey, are you are you dealing with lunches? Yeah, what, who's what, got who? Who's got what? Yep. What is going to be going on? And for the most part, it really usually is me in the morning um, getting up and what what I really feel is, is that you can really set the tone of the household when you get up extra early. And I know Dan said, he goes, oh man, I mean, how much earlier do I have to mm -hmm. get up? I feel that you can have a lot of the tasks that need to be done uh, in the evening so that they're not done during the morning rush. Mm -hmm. Uh, example, laying out the clothes. I'm a huge fan of like, oh, you want to wear that? Let's mm -hmm. make sure it's washed now. You want to mm -hmm. iron that shirt? Let's make sure we do that. Oh, I'll, I'll take a shower in the morning. I don't know how many times I go back and forth with my son. No, no, no. I'll shower in the morning. Dude. I'll totally shower. I'm like, dude, you're not showering in the morning. Mm -hmm. Shower tonight. Okay. Also, they sleep better, it feels like, sometimes when they take the hot mm -hmm. shower. Uh, and then the lunch thing. And now my son, because uh, he's in sixth grade, mm -hmm. but when he was younger, it's really, I feel, all about making the lunch, mm -hmm. making those choices of what kind of food you want to have. And yep. also the lunch is better if you make it at night. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, what a fun evening planning and putting right. all this out. But right. once again, and I'll throw it over to you, it's really about that routine. 
It is. Um, and I think that so you, you just said a few things. And, and one of the things that uh, you know was missing, but maybe maybe not intentionally, is I think a lot of parents take on more than they should. And I the, using the analogy of let's just say the captain of the ship, and you've got a whole bunch of you know crew that and what I think parents make a mistake for a, and it's a mistake for a couple of reasons. One, it puts way too much on us as parents if we're the ones doing all of the work, making the lunches, setting out the clothes, blah, 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 plus getting our ourselves ready. Um, and then it's also a mistake because it doesn't give our kids the opportunity to engage in those routines in a, in not in a, like you're being led around on a, on a leash, but that you are helping to teach them how they can, uh, you know, it, participate, participate in, the in their day, participate in the food that they're going to eat, participate in making sure their backpacks at the front door, participate on not missing a flight. Cause that's really what it comes down exactly. to. I always, I always use the analogy of whenever we've had those mornings where things are being misplaced or, and it happens to us all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. I do comedy, you know, three, four times a week. So yeah. I'm coming in 1am sometimes yep. and I really need just because it's me, I feel that I still want to be up at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. for these guys yeah. to get ready for school. With that said, plenty of lunches have been, ah, I'll just grab you something after I do drop off. Uh, but those days, really, it kind of, that chaos bleeds into the rest of the day. Yeah. I feel like once you're behind the eight ball, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to get out from behind it. So when you're saying... Uh, letting your kids do more of the uh, – now, for the younger kids, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say that. Like, I want to get your thoughts on this. So w at what age – are you letting your kids make their own lunch? Because I, you know, you know as well as I know, a yeah, few could, years could ago, go it would have been like, yeah, I got the chips, I got <laughs> yeah. my, I got my toy in there. You're like, dude, yeah. why is your truck inside the lunch? Yeah, right. bring in that. So right. when do you think you start letting letting your kids make their own lunch for school? Because that's a huge yes, help. Yes, yes. So again, tone is everything. So back to the radio tower, we we've talked about it in sort of like we want to be in a calm space as a parent, so that that frenetic chaotic energy is not setting our child's internal, you know, uh, uh, frequency, if you will. Um, Can I interrupt yeah, really quick? Yeah, Because yeah. I think what you're touching on, and I just want to mm -hmm. ask you, do you mean that if the household energy is chaotic in the morning, the rushing, everyone's looking for their clothes, and it's mm -hmm. just, uh, do you feel that carries on to the rest of the day? Absolutely. And that, and that we're the radio tower yeah. that sends that signal That's out. That's right. Totally agree yep. with you. 100%. And it sets, we have to remember that we are setting a, a tone or a standard for what is normal, right? So our kids want to feel like what they, it's really important that they have a space in the world ideally their home, where they feel safe and secure. And um, so, th so them having that as their sort of first, like, here's what helps me feel safe and secure, um, you know, being calm, participating in, you know, my lunch or what I'm going to wear, because that's a whole other topic too, that we're also using when we get our kids involved, um, we are helping them to not only learn in the most basic way, like here's how you put a lunch together. Here are the pieces that need to be a part of that. But also we are, they're, they're teachable moments in terms of the things that are important. Like, so if we look at the lunch, you asked about the lunches, how, how early? Well, personally, I think, you know, when they start kinder, which is really the beginning of their actual school experience, right? So before that, it's preschool and it's kind of hit or miss. And sometimes they're there three days a week, sometimes whatever. Kinder is really the beginning of sort of participating in that, for better or for worse, that societal structure. And um, so, so what a tremendous opportunity to make that the, the beginning of, okay, well, we need to make a lunch for you. And we want to make sure that it's nutritious so that your brain is going to work well all day. You're going to have lots of energy to play at recess. Those kinds of brain prompts are going to help them make sense of like, what does it take for my body to work at its optimal? So then that takes care of when they're nine and you're like, okay, you know what, you're going to start making your lunch on your own. Of course, they're going to be tempted to put an extra couple packs of like fruit gummies or whatever. or whatever. Yeah. But they're, what I have seen with my daughters firsthand is after years of like limited sugar intake, talking about not just no, because I say so, but that's not a good food choice because you're going to have less energy to play or your brain's not going to work as well when your teacher's trying to teach you your ABCs or whatever. That sticks with them. And so as they've transitioned to an age where they're participating in making their lunch, they've already got the, the foundation for making better choices. I agree with you. Uh, I recently saw my son go and reach for something at the store and then he, I see him reading the back of it mm -hmm. and he looks up mm -hmm. and he's all... 
56 grams of Brilliant. sugar. Brilliant. And I go, really? And he goes, yeah. I thought it was less. Put it back. I was like, yeah. yeah there you so go. So good. So there good. And, go. and then also, so that's also the, the other thing I was going to say is in terms of, you know, we've talked about this in previous shows that to me, one of the number one goals of parenting is to help our kids become self-sufficient out in the world, which, which requires practice making choices. And so not only is there an opportunity if they're participating in making their lunch, but picking out their outfit the night before, like those things are really important and help Helping them set that routine, I'm telling you, I, having seen now my oldest daughter, who is a full-blown adult, she's going to be 21 in July, when I see how she runs her own little ship, it's phenomenal. Like, it's truly impressive. And that is because of early years of creating a routine that is not meant to be limiting or stifling. And I think it's important you say that because I remember, and I know some of the parents out there right now are some of the parents-to-be, you're hearing the word routine, and I got to say, and I couldn't stand that word. Because mm -hmm. my whole life has been, I don't like routines. Mm -hmm. I don't, I can't stand rules. I can't mm -hmm. be, in, I don't like people telling me when and what I can do. And I just, routine was like, oh, great. So I got to do the same thing every single day. But then once I had kids, I really realized what routine meant. And, and the only analogy I can give you guys to this whole situation is, is you're the tour manager. You and your partner are the tour manager. Your band, Mick and Keith, yeah, that's your kids right there. Yeah. And you're in charge of getting them to and from stage. And you know what? Sometimes they're not going to be cool to you. Because have you ever seen a band, the way they treat their road crew? Sometimes <laughs> it's not that cool. But you know what? You know real bands. That's why you know Duff McKagan uh, from Guns N' Roses has sent same bass tech his whole entire career. You know why? Because that guy knows him inside and out and he yeah. trusts him. And I think our gig as parents uh, in the morning is to really set up a situation for everyone to win in. Uh, I'll do you ever feel that you do not have enough time in the day to do what you're supposed to get done? You know, you're going to work. You're maybe trying to hit the gym, but you forgot that, oh, I got to pick so-and-so up from daycare. Oh, I got to get my dad over to his doctor's appointment. Oh, I wanted to pick up the house before I left. Wow, check it out. How am I going to get everything done? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Go to care.com. Care.com. Care.com is the world's largest digital marketplace for finding and managing family care. That is right. Family care needs can be unpredictable. You got sick kids. You need someone to stay home. Man, both parents are out there trying to make a living. Your kids get sick. Oh, who's going to stay home? Who's going to miss out on that cash? Now you go to care.com and they'll have someone for you that can look after your kids. Don't stress your life away. Seriously, most working parents worry about their kids every minute of the day. You're more at ease and more focused when you know your kids or your parents or even your pets are well cared for. Best part is this, care.com provides access to a variety of background check options you can purchase to help make sure that you're making the best hiring decision. That's my favorite part right there. They're letting you know there's a million different things for you to check out on the background check options so you know who's going to be there with your kids or with your parents or with your pet taking care of the situation. Care.com. Check it out now. If you go to care.com right now, you ready for this? To save 30% off care.com premium membership, visit care.com forward slash rad parenting when you subscribe and you're going to get 30% off. Like I said, world's moving a million miles an hour. You just want to take care of your kids and all the responsibilities. Let care.com help. I'll give you a couple other examples that I was telling Ana about today. Uh, I feel in the morning, I like to, like I said, you or your partner need to figure out who's getting up first. Mm -hmm. Or I love it if you both get up and you hang out and you have that. I, I love that first morning cup of coffee mm -hmm. where we really get to be, we get to be there and plan for the attack. Like any minute they're coming. Yes. They're going to be coming yeah. down. Are you ready? Yeah. And if you're ready for that, I don't like, I shouldn't use the analogy attack, but sometimes yeah. it is. You're like, they're coming in. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you got to get everyone going. But if you have the lunches made and you have the clothes laid out and I love doing this, some of you might dig it, some of you might not. I throw on a little jazz in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, a little reggae, throw mm -hmm. a little Marley on. Yeah. That the radio tower is sending out some positive That's vibrations, right. man. Yes. I keep it low. Because yeah. you know, I'm not putting on ACDC. A couple times I've done that, and and, and Karen's been like, We're not listening to ACDC at six. First thing I'm like, got it. Thunder. Totally. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, but what but what I feel is is that if I can really control the environment to be positive, music on. Uh, uh, breakfast made. Mm -hmm. Let's dive into that. Yep. Uh, that sometimes 
I, I'll be honest, you get late, not lazy, but you just get, you get it pushed up against the wall. And I have sent my kids to school. They don't have any breakfast right. and you feel terrible, mm -hmm. you know? So, so that's the whole thing. That, so about the routine, as much yeah. as we want to, and there has to be balance. We don't, this is not meant to be something that is so rigid that it's limiting. In fact, it's meant to be a regular occurrence. So everybody kind of has a sense of like, here's what we do in the morning to maximize our ability to go out into the world on a positive positive note with good food in our backpacks, great breakfast food in our bellies, and n not the like, not World War III, yeah. like not World War III with each other, with, you know, going out into the world where you want to bite somebody's head off because you've just freaked out on your kid or they, they go out and, you know, get into it with one of their friends because they've just had a negative interaction with you. And those are going to happen. Like, let's be honest, there's going to be days. But I think that the, the value on so many levels, the teachable moments, the opportunity to enter the, and, and start a new day with great energy, to, um, to know that, to have a routine that they carry into their adulthood. There's just so many benefits to having a routine where you can really make the most of a limited amount of time. I, I know that I know that in my life, the situation that you're describing with setting it up and, and, and that whole vibe, when I was a kid living with my mom, single mother, working, we had to stay on track. Yeah. And doing the lunches before, setting out the clothes, yeah. making that all happen. When I was younger, it, and I thought it was so lame when I was a kid. I was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, why do I got to do this? But it really made such a difference that I it, it does carry on into your life. And and all, all I think we're trying to say is, is that you know, you have these moments during the school year, mm -hmm. you know, and then when summer rolls around, I mean, Christmas break, I don't know about your, about how it was at your house during the holiday break, but I'm telling you right now, people are sleeping in here till <laughs> 11 at 11 and 11 in the morning. Uh, you know, we're staying up till two, three in the morning. And watching, it's a treat. Yeah. And you appreciate it because you know, it's there was not no, the way that it always is. There was no, um, there was no, what, what was the word that I didn't like? Uh, routine. There was no routine. See, I can't even say the word. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, wow. I'm like the, remember when the <laughs> Fonz- like, Did he really forget? Remember when the Fonz couldn't say he was wrong I from Happy Days? Uh, with all of that said, um, let's just go recap really quick. Sure. So for our buddy Dan mm -hmm. and for all the people out there, they're trying to plan their, they're listening to this show right now and they're yeah. like, oh my gosh, my house is chaotic. Right. Uh, what, 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 let's go through Okay, so step go. number one, sit, if, you're, if you're a single parent- then it's 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 on you, and probably more important than anybody who's actually co-parenting. Uh, in the routine is essential to your sanity, to your kids' well-being, to their ability to participate in their day-to-day -day life. Blah blah blah, um, and all those things apply as well. But it's I'm just acknowledging from a place of like you know hats off. I've been a single parent. Th this is really essential. So sit down with your partner if you are parenting with someone and figure out how you're going to turn this around. Great thing to start on a. Monday, talk about it on the Sunday with your kids, approach it like we're a team, not a, you know, uh, a, a directive that's coming down from above that's, you know, going to be forced on them, but as something like, here's how we are going to uh, make sure that we all as a family can go our individual ways on a more positive note, not feeling like we've started our day in chaos and negativity, and and here's what everybody's going to be responsible for, and get them to participate. I mean, if they're old enough, and I would say, if they're even six or seven, they are old enough and want to feel like they have a voice in creating whatever your new routine is going to be. And if you've got a pretty good routine now, but you've heard some things that we've said today that you can, you know, further just sort of finesse it to make it more effective, um, then sit down and talk to your partner about maybe some of the things, the ideas that we've thrown out today. But don't shy. I think parents make an enormous mistake when they take on too much because they think it's going to in some way damage or burden their children to be participating in making their own lunch or picking out their own clothes or whatever. Um, one of the other things I'll say, you know, as things you can do is for my youngest, one of what, what she felt she needed to do was create a list of what her morning routine in an order was going to be. And she keeps it up in her room and she had to look at it for the first, you know, few days. And now it's just rote. She just, I, we, I get her up and she is ready to go out the door in about 30 minutes. I love lists. I want to go on. I want that on my epitaph. I, Joe loved lists. Yeah. I love lists. I love writing down what you need 
to have taken care of during yep. the day. And get them to write the list. Absolutely. Decorate it. Make it their Absolutely. own. This is Pythia's, you know, morning routine. It makes them feel like they have a sense of of um, of control of their life. Even though the parents are creating this routine and saying, here's what you need to do, it's really an invaluable set of lessons that and, they're going And all learn. you're really trying to do and all we're really trying to do as parents and as Dan is going through and everyone else that's listening to the show is all you're trying to make, make happen really is that your kids can participate in real life because let's all face it, uh, they're going to bed, they've got the flight at 6 a.m. And if these uh, type of lessons or these type of situations aren't dealt with right now where mm-hmm. we're just trying to get somewhere at eight o'clock, then that's how, you know, you start missing flights and then you, you know, every- right. Hard, uh, Harder and lessons if they have to do it, learn them for the first time yeah. later on. And, and as much as, you know, we really haven't ever really talked about so much structure um, on the show, but as we keep going through different episodes, I realize how important it is. And as much as I- fought structure like my whole life. It yeah. really has made, in my home at least, it really made such a difference on certain areas. Yeah. One of them, getting out the front door. Uh, to recap on my end, uh, I would just say you and your partner, uh, if if you're, like Anea said, the single mom, the single dad, just trying to make it happen, then you're getting up as early as you can, uh, having that coffee, having some time to yourself. I feel that is so important. It is. Sometimes I know this sounds crazy. You guys won't believe me. I go out in the backyard. I do a little meditation, um, which lasts like two seconds. But it's enough. It's enough that really kind of puts me in the mind frame. So when everyone starts coming downstairs, then I'm able to deal with everyone and to keep a positive energy with everyone. I put on the music. Uh, and I really feel that that makes a difference. And as Anea is taught, and, and and I never even heard of that, as being the radio tower, uh, as we are with our partners, as we are to our kids, makes such a huge difference in their day. It really yeah. does. And you make it to drop off, and then it really starts their whole day, and that energy can really flow through the rest of the day that they're up. And it's a foundation for their future. Like, really, in the, in the spirit of parenting so that we have – you know we are we are helping to to grow human beings that are conscious that are ready to take charge in their own lives that are you know ready to have you know balance and expect that they start to associate safety and love which are the things they associate with their home and their family with also having efficient routines and i use the word efficient because it allows actually for better use of the other time that you can have more flexibility with if you have a little bit more structure at the start of the day to get things going i love it Love it, love it. Hey, uh, thank you so much, Dan, for taking the time to basically Mm -hmm. pull together a whole topic for our entire show. And uh, anyone else that wants to ever suggest any ideas, we got a great suggestion recently on a show I want to do. Don't know when we're going to do it, but when you have a newborn coming into your house and you have Mm. an animal, you know, a dog. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it would so much, would it apply to a cat? I mean, I think it can. I'm or not just a any cat animal. person, but yeah, I think yeah. that when that animal has been used to being the center of attention and all of a sudden you're bringing this new little human being home, yeah, that's something that I think needs to not just be like, oh, whatever, it'll be okay. I think I it's love that, that we suggestion. Can... We're going to find someone to come in and talk to us about that because I know that even when we had my my daughter, we had a, a huge, we had a big pit bull, American pit bull, greatest dog ever. And, I, and my wife and I were both like, damn, how are we going to you know coordinate this? Because this dog has been such the focus that's right. of everything. It's, really, it's, it's like you brought us. home the second child and the dog. Was it really the first. was. It yeah. really was. So that'll be a great topic. Um, also, going to do some more shows on and I were talking about um, shows in this vein for some of the parents with newborns out there and toddlers. And we're getting requests for a lot of toddler shows. So those are coming up. We, we hear you. We love getting your, um, not only your ideas, but even your your questions um, that will help guide where, yeah. where we go and what everybody's needing out there. It's funny because as you and I read the questions, they really do go, it it's, runs the gamut. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we got today's show about how can we get out in the morning? Uh, question to questions about teenagers, questions, uh, toddlers. Mm -hmm. Then the question, what do I do when a dog gets here? So uh, I'm super, super excited for uh, the episodes coming up. Also, one more time on the reminder, uh, if you text the word parenting, uh, to the number 313131. Uh, Anea is going to pick three winners and have a, a, f- a free 30 minute parenting coaching session. We'll do with it by you. phone or we'll Skype. We'll do it by phone. We'll do it by phone yeah. or Skype. And uh, I, I think that's going to be great. And it also gives us a chance to find out where all you guys are at. Uh, with that said, keep the emails coming to radparenting at gmail.com. Also, if you write the reviews, we love it. We love it. We love it. Love it. Take a picture of a review that you've written and uh, we. We will pick a winner and uh, send you a copy of Anaya's book. 
Brilliant. Nine ways that we are screwing up our girls and how we can stop. I love that title. It's huge and it's long. It's really long. <laughs> yeah. People love it though. <laughs> Hopefully it's memorable. All right. Hey, thank you guys so much for listening to Rad Parenting. My name is Joe Sib. And Anaya Bogue. And we are out of here. Late. Late.